Hey there. This is a guide for speedrunning the definitive edition of Ori in the Blind Forest, and the category we're going to be taking a look at is all skills with no to bounce and no teleport anywhere. So this category is the most popular category to run and the most popular category to start with because it gives you a good amount of uh, playthrough of the game without making things too broken and ending the game right away. And it has a nice mix between just basic movement and using bugs to skip through sections. So it's a, it's a good category to start with. So if you've never run the game before, this guide is a good starting point. Or if you're just looking to get up to date on all the route changes that have gone on recently, you could, you could give this a watch. So I'm just going to go through the run, and we'll talk about things as we go. And I'm also going to break this up into a few videos, so when we're kind of at a logical break point, I'll stop and, you know, link to the next one, basically. Okay, so first stop, uh, all speedruns of this game are done on normal. Hard just doubles the damage that enemies do to you, so it just makes damage boosting more difficult, basically. And easy lowers the health of enemies which makes a couple tricks impossible. So normal is basically considered the category we run on, and you can change these difficulties in the game, but it's banned for the speedrun because it doesn't add anything of interest to the run, so you just play it normal. And uh, there. So you start the game. After three seconds of this intro scene playing, you can press escape and skip the prologue. Now, uh, there is both keyboard mouse players and controller players. I'm a keyboard mouse player myself, so a lot of the time when I talk about controls, I'll be talking about the keyboard mouse equivalent, but there is, you know, there's nothing in this game you can't do on controller. There's some things that are more difficult than keyboard mouse, and there's some things that controller is better at as well, but you basically can use whatever input method you prefer. So right off the start here, uh, I'll just talk about a few basic things. So the UI in this game, which shows your health, energy, experience, can be toggled by pressing Alt-U. And uh, most runners will run with it off pretty much the entire game, because it, when the UI is off, all dialogue lines get skipped instantly. For ease in this tutorial, I'm going to be keeping it on most of the time. I'll, I might turn it off for parts where there's just dialogue, just to make them a little faster, but that's that. And then at the start of the game, uh, the only thing you can do to speed up your movement is jumping. Jumping is very, very slightly faster than running along the ground. So repeated jumps are a little bit better, but it's it's a very minor, <laughs> very minor difference between them. So you don't want to spam jumps and like make yourself fall into the water because you're not gaining that much speed out of it. So it's fine to like run along the ground like that. So you can make it over that bramble. So first thing we're going to do is just go down and get sign. Uh, you can try to carry your momentum through that wall, but I didn't there. It doesn't really matter once again. And uh, so I'll turn on UI off here so I can skip this dialogue. Now, as you approach sign, you want to click or press X or whatever to pick up sign. Only when you're able to pick it up. So right when, right when you get to about here, you'll press X. If you don't, then you're, like, you can kind of see how I'm walking at a reasonable pace. If I click it far away, you walk really slowly in and pick, pick up a sign after, you know, strolling over there, and that loses, like, a second. So you want to only click it when you're close to sign. So now we've got this. We've got to fight some, uh, some Frankies here, with jumpers. And for that, I'll talk a little bit first about how sign attacks. So... Uh, when you upgrade your attack, this changes, but in this route, you do not get to upgrade your attack at all. Well, okay, that's a lie. You upgrade your attack late in the game, but it already doesn't matter at that point. So the way, the way Sun attacks with the unupgraded attack is if you if you mash the mouse, you'll shoot two shots, and then you'll have a half second cooldown before you can shoot again. Alternatively, you can pace shots one at a time, and then that will let you shoot every third of a second. So that looks like that. Or you can mash. It's a couple frames faster to do really good mashing uh, in terms of raw shots per second, but what you're going to end up doing against these Frankies will 
kind of be varied because they have 5 health. So if you just mash, you're going to wait a bit too long. So what you want to do is one of the two. You either pace 5 shots, or if slightly faster, is to shoot one paced shot and then mash, uh, mash two sets of two on them. And then sign talks to you and brings up the map screen, and you can just uh, hit cancel or whatever to get through that, which is you know escape or right click or this and that. I might be be a little confused about what binds do what because you can rebind a bunch of your uh, keys in this game. There's a file, which I'll put in the description of this video how to get to it, that lets you change a bunch of bindings. And also while we're at it, I need to mention debug mode. Because setting this up, this menu, is built into the game. And I'll put a description on how to get this set up in the video description again as well. <laughs> and basically what this lets you do is save anywhere you want. So I can save like right in the middle here and then load that save. And this is really convenient for practice, and it also lets you do things like teleport around the game, give yourself uh, whatever abilities. So I just gave myself double jump and triple jump, and you know stuff like that. Like I can give myself the keys to eat dungeons or whatever, just like that. Change my health, change my energy, all that kind of good stuff. So. De debug mode is super handy for practicing because it lets you save in segments and set up your abilities for segments without having to you know, go through the entire game and make a file for it. But yeah, we'll, I'll give a description on how to set that up in the description of this video. So let's move on. Uh, you can damage boost through this plant here. One of the things that you're going to do right near the start is a trick called the ghost door. And uh, that involves putting keys into a door so the opening animation starts. Opening animations of doors you normally take 5 seconds to play, but uh, if you die after putting keys in the door and then saving, the door will just be open already. So that's what we're going to do here, is we're going to damage boost ourselves down to 1 so that we can... Uh, We can open this door faster. So you just hold save as you fall and you put the two keys in. Now if I die, the door will already be open. But just to talk about this door a little bit first, uh, what you want to do is you, you want to put those keys in as you're falling. If you touch the ground before the door is opened, then there will be a short cutscene that describes to you like what doors are and how to open them and that loses you a fair bit of time. So put the keys in as you're falling and then save. And swim into the, go into the water. If you've got a health drop there, then you might be uh, at 2 health, but you can just take another hit from the water or swim into the fish that's in the water there. Now, getting that life cell is optional, but highly recommended. I'm gonna get a few sort of safety things throughout this run, because this is intended to be like a beginner route, so if you're just started running this game, you just want to finish a run. I'm going to make a sub couple side trips to make things easier. And you only lose 8 seconds for that health cell, so it's a it's a good safety measure. It's not a huge time investment for how much easier it makes things later. Alright, so the other thing that I've been doing is I've been picking up experience to set up a level up. Now I actually picked up a little bit too little, so I'm gonna level up on the way out of wall jump. You can take a bit more than I did by, say, not damage boosting through that wall at the end there, and then level up on the way down, but depends on your experience bounces, basically. And other people have more solid experience routes than me, so they'll always level in the same place, but I kind of just take the experience that falls my way. And of course, if you miss this level up entirely, it's not a big deal. All you have to do is kill the bramble wall on your way up, and you lose about 5 seconds doing that, whereas getting this level up uh, just saves that time essentially. So I'm going to level up here, and then this will blow up for me. Now the next level up is pretty important, but the experience range is pretty wide for that, and I'm going to talk about that as I get to the Blackroot Burrows. 
Also note that I get, got the energy cell to the top left wall jump. All the energy in this run is taken purely for speed. There's no like extra safety energy that gets taken. So you certainly want to copy the energy route exactly. You want all four cells that we're going to be picking up. So now we're just heading over to Blackroot Burrows to get Dash. Uh, Dash is a new skill in the Definitive Edition, which gives you a burst of horizontal speed, and as such is pretty darn good for uh, for speedrunning because it's it's really really fast, <laughs> like three times faster than normal running movement. So here, I'm just going to turn UI off for a sec, to skip that dialogue. Now, on this teleporter, uh, we're going to do a trick called Save Anywhere. And the way you do this is, first, the UI has to be on. So when you're doing this with UI off and runs to skip dialogue, you have to turn the UI on before you get on this teleporter, basically. And then you're going to open the Save menu, or the Ability menu. You're going to click this Experience thing, which will pop up that dialogue. And then you're going to press uh, proceed and cancel in the same frame, which is like A and B on the controller, escape in space, left click, right click, or using the key rebindings file, which I put in the description. You can also uh, just set a bind that does this. So you do that, and it tricks the game into thinking you're, you've escaped out of the menus and the game's supposed to resume, but this menu is still there. So I can move around in the background while... Uh, while this menu is still up. Now, uh, when you level up an ability in this game, the game will save. And that lets us do a whole bunch of cutscene skips. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to come up to up here. Now when I get over to the right side of the screen here, uh, there's going to be a cutscene that starts. And then I'm going to save as soon as it starts and then reload the file. And what this does is in most cases, a cutscene will set whatever flags it has for completing as soon as it begins. There's a couple exceptions, but most of them can be skipped like this. So if you're unable to save in a cutscene by actually placing a save, you can do stuff on the ability menu. And in this case, we're going to grab Magnum. Now, secondly, I'm going to take a look at my experience here. I want it to be somewhere between 25 to next level and 43 to next level. So we're right in the middle there right now. So this is perfect. If you're too high or too low, you have to modify experience bit, and I'll talk about that as we get into black group. But here what we're going to do is I'm going to walk to the right until Ori stops and looks at the statue, and then I'm going to level magnet and reload the file. So first sign's like, hey, there's a statue. So Ori's going to walk to the right, stop and turn, and then you can level magnet and reload. And this will skip the cutscene and leave the slow walking zone behind, but it's way faster than uh, actually watching the cutscene. So let's turn UI back on. I turned it off while I was in the menu there to skip the dialogue. And then we're just heading through Black Root. So we're gonna take, it normally going to kill two slimes and get 24 experience in here. We wanna set up a level up using 19 experience from a Franke. Uh, after we leave this place, so you want to be within 19 to level when you leave. So if you were above 43 when you came in, you should also kill this slime. Uh, and if you were under 24, then you're going to kill, or you're going to skip the next slime that I would kill. Now we're just going to head up through Blackroot. Uh, you note that these lasers, I, like I have a good good cycle there. I know what the cycle is because it's consistent from when I entered Blackroot. But if you're a little slow, those lasers can be on off cycles, and all three of them move at different rates, so you have to be careful about how you go through them, but you'll get used to it soon enough. Now here we're going to wait on the left edge of that platform just that long until you can't see that the platform that took you up there anymore. And that's a quick little manipulation that delays the uh, loading of platforms in this next room, and I will be able to meet. Uh, I'll be able to meet this platform at the bottom here and go up immediately. If I had gone over immediately and waited for this platform, like under where it was, then I would have missed this platform cycle. Now here's a little trick. You don't have to do this. You can just carry the orb to this next platform, but you can also drop it early and get ahead of the laser that way, which saves you a little bit of time because. 
your movement with the orb is roughly a third of your uh, movement without it, so it just saves you time on that one jump, basically, and the put down the orb animation. So that's Blackroot. Uh, we'll need some practice. Like you will die in Blackroot at first because there's a a lot of mean stuff, like the lantern part with the horizontal shooter and the slime and you know, this and that can kill you. The lasers will kill you, but it's not overall too bad. So now we're just gonna jump across and get dash. And I'll take a moment here to talk about dash mechanics. So. Dashing, as mentioned, is about three times faster than uh, than running, just doing consecutive dashes. You can dash once every uh, just under half a second, that's 25 frames, or 24, like one frame dash, 24 frames, and then you can dash again. Now, there is another thing to dashing that's not just spamming along the ground called dash gliding, which looks like this. And that moves you at a slightly faster speed, about 25% faster than normal running. So it's slower It's slower than spamming dash, like you don't want to move like this across ground, it's better to do con continuous dashing. But when you're going over a pit, you can dash glide. Now the way you dash glide is you start a dash with a directional input, either left or right held. Then you release that input during the dash, during the first, I think, 13 frames and then you jump and that causes you to, to get this dash glide effect. If you fail, if you continue to hold the input, it looks like this, like you're considerably slower coming out of the dash. And if you don't release the input in time, uh, let me just fail one, hang on. You can, you get things like that, like you'll, you won't maintain your speed. So what you want to do is just Hold the input at the start of the dash, release it, and then jump. It takes a little bit to get used to it, but this is a good thing to be aware of because it's really useful all over the place, although not required for any of the tricks in the run, basically. Just a whole bunch of nice optional time saves you can get with dash glides. But for example, like crossing this pit, like I want to dash glide across it because it's faster. But uh, let me just die. <laughs> show. You can make it across just by dashing and then jumping out of it. So without even releasing the input, I can still make it across. And it's fine to take one damage from that slime. Now the other thing about dash gliding is I'll, I'll show two movement paths through here. If you're not uh, comfortable with dash gliding yet, you can just consecutively dash and you'll kind of run through the start of that cutscene and then get slowed down and then continue forward. Or you can walk through it really slowly. But those cutscene slow zones that get left behind when you skip a cutscene are uh, not subject to... They won't slow you down if you're not holding a directional input when you're in there. So you can dash glide right over it like this. So that's a little bit faster than uh, just dashing through. This would be an optional save. I'm not going to take it, but you could if you, were, if you wanted for safety. And now... Uh, first, I'm going to go over here. We're going to lure Funky over this way, but I want to talk about this part a little bit first. So uh, I'm going to heal myself to full with Debug, just to show some different damage boosts here. This set of spikes, we're going to have to jump over with the Franky following us. This area to the left of where I'm mousing will do one damage to you when you jump into it. So you can jump over the spikes like that. Take one damage there, and you can jump over the spikes. Now we're going to jump back. If you go a bit like further to the right, if you do a full jump, you will take two from these. And that's fine too, because if you've taken four health, taken one from the slime on your way out of black root, you'll still have three here. So you can still take this two damage, and it's okay. But it just it's just good to be aware of the fact that if you find yourself at two health when you uh, get over here, you can just take one on the left side of the spikes. Now... Let's get the Franky over here. So as mentioned, this guy drops uh, 19 experience. Oops, that's not how you do that jump, you just jump. <laughs> this guy drops 19 experience, so you wanted to make sure in Blackroot that uh, you set yourself up for this level up. So we're just gonna make him follow us along here. Uh, note that to get him over this pit, you have to wait for him to jump there. Oftentimes, there is a faster setup, like if 
aren't slow getting him into the tree, which I was in this case, you can get the Franky to land right there on that platform and then just go straight over, but I'll just show you why uh, you need to be aware of that manipulation. So if I just go straight over now, okay, he barely didn't get stuck, but often he will get stuck. Let's uh, try to make this a more realistic setup. Okay, follow me. Okay, put him there, and then I'll go straight over. And now he's just going to be stuck in there, and I, I'm going to have to go back to the, uh, like, right close to him to get him out of there. So I'm first going to heal myself with debug, because I didn't want to get hit by that Franky, and then we're going to finish the rest of this walk. Okay, so, we get him over the pit, and then you just damage boost with the spikes. These spikes don't affect that Franky, so that's good. And then you're going to want to lower him to one health, or, you know, two health, one hit from death with your Spirit Flame, and then get him in here. And now, I would have wanted to kill him on one of these early jumps, uh, like as I'm getting up to this door, because even if I'm down here on the wall, I can still put energy into the door. But just to show you, if you lose his attention, you don't need to do anything complicated, you just come to the edge and jump, and then he'll see you again, he'll start just jumping at you. And then you can just kill him at the top of his jump, put two energy in the door, level up, that refills your energy, put two more energy in the door, and we'll open. So that's the, the Franky walk. Uh, here, if the Franky is nice to you, he'll drop energy, which is a 10% chance, but generally you won't. And this next part, when you're learning, requires a bit of practice, so this is where I really would recommend having debug mode set up, so you can make a debug save here. And I'm going to make it that debug save so that I can just show a few different ways over this part called the death run. Uh, probably what's easiest is to just dash off the edge into the water, and then kill the slime, take six shots, and then jump up to the wall, like, close to, uh... You want to jump from close to the wall so that Franky doesn't see you early. So I'll show you that movement uh, continuously here, where I don't stop and then dodge the Franky. So, jump up the wall, get in here, and then just dash past the guy. Uh, what a lot of people do wrong at first is they start the jump from too far away. So like, if I jump out of the water from there, Franky sees you while you're doing the jump somehow, and he'll kill you. So you need to make sure that you start your jump out of the water from close to the wall to be able to get under him. And then uh, you want to get up here and then just do like a tap on jump to do a wall run up under the front and then start dashing to get past them. There's a couple other ways to do this part. Uh, that dash in and then kill the guy is what most people start with. Uh, there's another way where you can intentionally bait the front out early by doing a dash glide across this pit which has the nice side effect of giving you more experience, which lets you skip a uh, pickup animation later. But, uh, okay, let me get actually get a dash glide. There. So you, you dash glide across the pit with a pretty high glide, and then the Franky will see you and jump, and you'll just swim to the left to d dunk him into the water. There's one other way of doing this, if you prefer, where uh, you just don't kill the slime, you just damage boost it instead, which looks something like this. You can do that only taking two damage, but I kind of messed up my swimming. Let's see if I can do it a bit better. Nope. <laughs> that was much worse. Something like that, anyways. But... Most people start with just not worrying about the dash glide, like if you're not comfortable with that, just gliding, you'll just go through like this. So I'll actually go through on this one. Just get close to the wall, jump up, and dash past the Franky. Now here, we're gonna go up and get another energy cell, so we gotta kill these four brambles. And then, uh, right up on the side of this thing, and then you can... You can do a dash jump or a dash glide, or just ride it up a bit higher to grab this energy cell. And then, we're gonna... We're going to head down into Grotto. So here you can dash from both the middle of the platform to get over that slime. Rarely you'll get ramped, uh, you'll get ramped by that slime, and, or ramped by the terrain and hit the slime, but if you had 4 health, it shouldn't kill you. 
you should be only taking two damage from the death water and uh you can often get health drops from the uh, four brambles you kill so usually it's fine but you can you can also place a save before that there's no uh use of this energy really no in, like, important use so you can save any time you want through there and that's that's not a big deal once you've got that energy cell okay so here uh i'm not even going to do it in this video there's a fat there's a way you can get through this part a cycle earlier by setting up dashes and ramping up there i just did it a little slow because normally you'll be seeing this like waiting for this cycle but i will put a link in the video to uh, a description of how to get the fast cycle here now as well uh, at some point in here you want to check your health because you want to damage boost down to one health these spikes do two these spikes do one so you can get yourself down to one here and then like we did at the start of the game we're gonna do another ghost door so put the keys in the door save and then get yourself killed and now you can head down to get double jump Just turn the UI off here. Now before you get double jump, uh, there's an optimization, which I'll do, although you don't have to do this at first, where you place a save, activate double jump, open the menu and level your Kindle, and then reload the file. And that basically is this cutscene skip on the double jump tree, but you have to do some blind movement on the way out of here. So it's gonna take some practice, but I'll just, I'll just show it here. So we get double jump, level your Kindle, reload the file, And then I'm just running back along the uh, the path we came. Note that the platform is gone from the poison water, so you have to you have to know where the poison water is to jump over it. But it's not that it's not that bad. It just needs a little practice. And then we're gonna go over the top here just to grab our last energy cell. Energy at the, this time, all we can use it for is saving, so it's not particularly useful. Uh, but it becomes way more useful later once we have Charge Dash, which takes energy to use and can be exploited for a lot of speed. Now here I'm going to take a moment and just talk about wall jumping. So the way uh, you initially climb walls is just doing these single wall hops like this. But when you jump you get a burst of speed, and the same is true for double jump. So the, way, the fastest way to wall climb is to do a jump and then after a quarter of a second do a double jump back into the wall so so that is the kind of rhythm you're going for where you get the double jump in between your hops like that i'll just briefly mention there's also a technique called ninja jumping where you can accelerate your double jump to be more like a sixth of a second than a quarter of a second away by uh, going to neutral inputs when you when you do the first wall jump, but it's pretty difficult to do it well or well enough to actually make it faster. But it looks something like this. Yeah, I'm really slow at it. For for human play, like that's a that's a good task trick. For human play, you're generally just going with these quarter of a second double jumps in between wall jumps. Anyways, uh. Now if I did the dash glide in the death run, this is the pickup animation I was talking about skipping. This is a 15 experience orb. Uh, so if I had gotten 15 experience from that Franky in the death run, I could just jump over it and land up here. But since I didn't, since I did the uh, more common strat in this tutorial, I'm going to make sure to pick it up because we're setting up for a level up at the top of the Ginso tree and having that experience is helpful for that. Now here is a trick called the grotto skip. What, we're, what you do casually in this game is you go, you jump across to the left here, and then you do this entire chase sequence with Gumo through a bunch of spikes. But instead, we're just going to jump off this wall and, you know, bypass all of that. So the point we're going to jump on is right here, where I'm mousing over. That part of the wall will give you a jump that you can get to the top. And the cue for it is just above this third lantern. On these set of three lanterns in the background. So from on top of this here, you can do a full a full jump and let yourself fall a bit into the wall, and then you can get the wall jump off. So if done correctly, it should look something like not that. This. So the inputs are you jump into the wall, 
you wait till you're at the right height, basically. You'll, you don't want to jump right away because you'll get that sad double jump there. And then you do a wall jump holding left and then double jump and hold right again. So just once more, I fell a bit too low and then I went a bit too high. There it is. So it's a little bit of a finicky jump, but it's not too bad with practice. And it saves a whole bunch of time over going to the, uh, to the, whatchamacallit, to the left. So now we're just going to head up through uh, the top of Grotto. Now here's the, there's a cutscene skip. Uh, the trigger is along this line, the middle of this flower patch. So the way to skip this is to place a save somewhere in the left side of this flower patch. Even, you know, over, over here would be fine. It's pretty wide range. And then we'll run into the cutscene to start it, and then we're going to rekindle our save, and uh, that'll skip the cutscene. Now, note that if you didn't get rekindle yet, like if you didn't do that uh, skip at double jump, you can do this. I could just level rekindle right now and then reload the file, because that saves the game, so this would have the same effect. So I could level rekindle right now and reload the file, but since I already have rekindle, I'm just going to rekindle and reload the file. You can rekindle any time after the camera starts panning up, and that'll work. And that saves time by not making you watch the cutscene uh, of Gumo pulling the lever and dropping the rocks on you. And also, uh, you know, there's no rocks in this part, so it's a lot easier. Here, once again, there's another cutscene skip. The trigger this time is along this wooden beam. So you just want to place the save to the right of the wooden beam, and then you'll walk into the cutscene and rekindle. And reload the file. And then if you, you can jump there to get over a bit of the slow walking zone. Now we got the water main. So let's go to Genso. There's only one, I guess two little detours we're going to take on the way to Genso. Uh, one of them is we're going to get an ability cell because we need to get charged dash later in the game and we, this is a convenient cell to get. And we're going to activate the Swamp Teleporter, which is going to be where we come back to at the, uh, at the end of the game to get back to Mount Horror. This is the most convenient one to get. So, uh, head through here. <laughs> it's weird with the, the dialogue boxes popping up, like those pickup boxes I normally wouldn't have to click through if I was playing with the UI off. but. Here we're heading up to this ability cell. Here's another sort of tricky jump, but it's not too bad. We're going to jump off about this section of wall to get here, and then jump up there. So the inputs are... we're holding left for a fair bit to get off this wall, and then right with our double jump, and then it's a quick left-right double jump to get onto the, the higher part. So basically something like this. One more time. <laughs> This, this one's a lot easier than Grotto Skip, so if you've gotten to this point, I don't imagine you'll have too much trouble here. And then, oh, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a save at the part top of this tree, because this next part, this next part is on cycles, and I want to show you, like, a good and a bad cycle, so let me just save here so I can come back to this file. Now, so you want to dash off the top of this tree, optional dash glide, and then if you had good movement there. You can pull this rock out until the part where Ori kind of starts to fall on the edge and then get on top of it and crouch and dash and that'll push you over the top of the rock you can get here. And then you just want to touch the top of this teleporter briefly so that sign flies into it. Like it's fine to... like th th this won't work. That will work. Like, here is not close enough. Like, that's the that's the minimum you can do to activate this teleporter. Sign just has to fly towards it, and then you can dash away and then push this rock out and get up. But I'm gonna die and go back to that save, and then uh, show a bit of a worse cycle. So if like, oh gosh, I messed up my wall jumps kind of thing. If that happens, and you're not going to be able to pull this out before this middle crusher comes down, it's best to just push the rock in at that point, rather than waiting for that cycle. So, just small things, basically. And then, 
You're gonna head up again, so you can damage juice through the slime by just holding a wall run until he hits you and then jumping afterwards. But you could also kill that slime if uh, if you're too low on health, like if you got hit by one of those spinning crushers or something. <clears throat> okay, so here's another cutscene skip. The trigger for it's right here. This blade of grass that is kind of getting lit up by Ori right there. So you just want to place a save near it and then walk into the cutscene and rekindle. And now note, as soon as you step into this cutscene, you'll be running to the right. So your save has to be pretty good for this one to not like have you get pulled away from it before your rekindle finishes. So it just looks like this. And then... Uh, you can carry on. Now, of course, a lot of these cutscene skips, like the one at the top of the rock fall, basically every cutscene skip I've done in this segment, except for the, the first one that skips the falling rocks ever spawning, uh, missing them doesn't matter. Like, if you miss them, it's better to just watch the cutscene and continue than it is to, like, go back to a save and read the cutscene skip. So they're just small time saves. So now we're in Ginso. Uh, this part is all just movement. I'm gonna note something here, is if you die in Ginso, there's an interesting thing that happens. So let's say I screw up, die. The camera... Okay, it didn't quite mess up, but the camera can mess up because this cutscene at the bottom is still playing. You can fix it by just walking out the door and walking back in to let the, the cutscene of Gumo stealing the water vein finish. Anyways, now for Ginso, uh, this jump is sort of tricky. What you want to do, you don't have to do this to succeed this jump. This is the easiest way to, to succeed this jump, is to hold down and then press jump to force Ori to backflip. And then even if you tap jump doing a backflip, you'll get a max height jump. But tapping jump without it, you get these short little hops. A tap with a backflip is a maximum height jump. So you just do a backflip and then double jump to make it up to that. And if this platform is swinging like a bunch, then you so you failed the jump and the platform is now swinging back and forth. You can get up to uh, this part and then make the jump over there, and that makes it a little bit easier. But you want to go with this backflip. It's the fastest way. And then here, uh, if you were fast getting up through this room, the slime will be on the right, and you can do that movement. But if you don't want to deal with the slime, or if you're just a little bit slow and the slime is now on the left side of the platform as you get here, uh, you can get on top of this and just backflip up to this wall. And then uh, just carry on through again. So I'll just mention that you can do something called telehopping in this room, which is where you jump back and forth between these teleporters, like this. But doing that this slow is not worth it at all. Uh, and you can save like a quarter cycle in here with that, but it's... Uh, for the time being, I'd say just go through this room normally, basically. And get up to the top. And then you're going to take the upper route here. It's just a little bit faster than going down below. If you do this movement correctly, you can get under that spider without him shooting you, and then head into this portal room. This w <laughs> I even messed up, nice. But this portal room will probably kill you a bit, so it's good to... It'll, it'll need a little bit of practice to get used to the movement in there. Now for this puzzle room, all we can do is actually solve the puzzle, but we don't need this other piece for it. You can just put this block in this position, wait for it to redirect a second shot, and then push it through that portal, and then that solves it. Now, uh, for the mini boss. So, re remembering earlier what I said about shot pacing, you can fire once every 18 frames like this, you can mash shots on the boss, like so. And, uh... He needs 40 hits to kill. It's possible to get 8 hits a cycle. So it can, you can 5 cycle this boss. You might 6 cycle him if you're a little bit slow. And the other thing to mention about it is it'll be hard to see, and possibly impossible to see in this guide, because I'm uh, recording at 30 FPS, and this is a 60 frame game. But... The f when this mini boss disappears from his, from where he was like shooting at you, for one frame he'll always show himself at the next position before, it, like as soon as he disappears, there will be one fl frame where he flashes into existence at his next position, and then he'll uh, he'll pop out there. So, if you get used to training your eyes, the strategy for this mini boss 
is to stand on the left side of this platform, which covers the top spawn, the middle spawn, the bottom left spawn, and then just watch these two locations, bottom right and top right, to see if you can see the one frame uh, appearance, and then you can go over there to meet him if you see that. So anyways, let's just fight the mini-boss. If you can't see it, it's best to just stay bottom left. Like, I saw it bottom right there. I didn't see it, and it was top right. But you can just default back to this uh, left side of the center platform when you don't see his spawn to cover three out of five spawns. So that's the mini boss fight. You should level up here. If you don't, that indicates your experience is just a little bit low. You see, I barely leveled up. But this makes my experience set up for the next part pretty easy. And uh, if you didn't level up, all you need to do is make sure you make up that amount of experience by picking up like a flower or killing a Franki at the end of Ginso. And uh, that should do it. Now here, uh, this movement is kind of kind of neat. All you do is get up against this flower, and then just hold jump and left, and you'll damage who's there. Uh, if you didn't level up and you had low health, then you probably can't do that. And there, there you just go store once again. I just jumped off the door and uh, into the spikes up above, just to skip that door opening animation. Now we're at Bash, so I'm gonna. Break this video here and link to the next part, and uh, continue on in a, in a new video, because this is uh, basically the first segment of the run.